So before even beginning a pass, uh, first you need to select an appropriate satellite that you're going to use. And now in this particular instance, we're going to be using AO92. And I've actually got that from the Heavens Above app. Uh, it's an app that takes your location and shows you amateur radio satellites that are passing above and gives you a uh, more specific time frame and where it's going to be. So I know that the AO92 satellite's coming up. So I went ahead and went online and um, I just put in Google AO92 frequencies and this is the website that came up. And this is going to show me a list of frequencies that I want to go ahead and pre-program into my radio and this is going to make the satellite pass a lot easier. Now the reason that you need multiple frequencies is to account for the Doppler shift which will be explained a little bit more later in this video. But um, for now you need to know that I have put in diff these different frequencies for five different channels of the satellite pass. You don't have to do this, uh, but it's going to make it much. You can, it's going to make you much more clear when you're trying to transmit to the satellite. In some instances, other people much more clear if there's a Doppler shift with the receive frequency. Um, in this case, this website doesn't re recommend a Doppler shift uh, for the receive frequency because they're all the same. So what this actually means in layman's terms is once the satellite begins to pass, I'm going to want to um, transmit with this 435-340 frequency. Uh, once it's at my closest approach, probably max elevation, that's going to be 435-350. And once it's setting, it's going to be 435-360. So what I've done in my Balfang radio here is went ahead and pre-programmed these five channels. Uh, that way I can easily just use the up or down buttons on my radio to switch between different frequencies as the satellite passes. So the first thing that you want to do on your phone is make sure you have the Heavens Above app. This is actually going to allow you to track satellite passes in your location. So I'm just going to go ahead and open that up to show you what it looks like. So once you're in the app, the best thing that you want to do is hit radio satellites. And there's only certain satellites that you can hear a repeater frequency on. Uh, the ones that I track are SO50, AO91, AO92, and AO85. Now, as you can see here for this example, we're going to be tracking this AO92 pass that is happening. And the time is 2251. That's actually going to be mid-pass. So I'm going to tap on that. <clears throat> and what you're seeing here is actually a, um, a map that will show the pass overhead. Now, you'll notice actually if you bring your phone up to the sky, you see the cross symbol is actually going to be the gyroscope where it's uh, your phone's, the satellite is going to be. So you can actually see um, where it's going to pass over in the sky. So it's better to do this uh, at the start, and that way you get an idea. In this case, um, I know the direction that the satellite is going to pass, and it's going right overhead, and it's actually going to come back down over here. Uh, what you want to note is going to be your time that the satellite rises, the time that it's at max elevation, and the time that it sits. You're also going to want to note the azimuth for the rises, the azimuth for the max elevation, and the azimuth for the sets. Now, you may be asking why. Well, uh, sometimes this app is not as accurate, so you can actually open a um, download and open a an, uh, compass app, and you can shoot an azimuth in the direction that the satellite is supposed to be in. So in this case, it's going to rise in 165, max elevation is 77, and it's going to set in 350. So I can open up my compass app, If I know that it's going to rise at 165, I can actually point my compass at 165 and then I know exactly where to aim my antenna when the satellite rises. Mid-pass is going to be 77. Met, uh, max elevation, so that's going to be right when it's overhead. Um, usually if you're using an omnidirectional antenna, it's going to be flat. And then it's going to actually fall at 350, so that's going to be since it's going right overhead, it's going to be pretty much the complete opposite way that it rises. So once you know that information, you want to find a good spot where you have a clear path of the horizon of both the rising and the setting. And the max elevation, you don't need to be as worried about because uh, obstructions on the horizon shouldn't be as much in the way once it's overhead. So once you found a good place, uh, just go ahead and come out to your area and hold your antenna broadside to the horizon where it set, rises and open back your app 
and wait for the rising. Alright, so in this case I've measured the azimuth. The satellite's actually going to rise over here on this horizon. The max elevation is going to be this way. So it's going to matter too much because this satellite pass is going to be right above. And uh, it's actually going to set over this horizon. So I have a relatively clear view on both directions. So this should be a pretty good pass. Um, now before we actually start listening to the satellite, I'm actually going to explain how this works. So uh, if you're watching this video, more than likely you're using an omnidirectional antenna like me. Uh, this is a one-fourth wavelength. So um, it's going to be the optimal one, but you can use the same rubber duck antenna that comes with these radios. So you want to point the antenna, since this polarization can be horizontal, you want to point it broadside to the satellite. So once it comes over the horizon, you can start out about like this. And as it passes over, your antenna is going to become more and more um, vertical or horizontal as it goes by. So what that means once the max elevation is reached and it's right over top, you're pretty much holding the radio sideways and that's going to be the best way that you receive and transmit. And as the satellite passes over, the, sat uh, the antenna is going to come back down and you're still going to point it broadside toward the satellite. And once it goes back over this horizon, I should be, um, the antenna should be vertical. Again. So uh, for this next step, this is actually going to be the satellite rising. So I'm just going to do what I would normally do. I'm actually going to hold the radio broadside. And before I try to transmit and make any type of contact, I'm going to try to make sure that I can wait until it's as clear as possible and there's nobody else talking on the bird. Now, a lot of times I'll actually record um, the whole situation because a lot of stuff's going on. It helps me go back and uh, write down people's call signs and make my QSLs that way. So I usually use an audio recording, especially since you're using a handheld, you're having to do a lot of work with your hands, and that's not going to allow much opportunity for you to take a pen and paper and write these things down. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and track the satellite. I'm going to pay attention to the first time it comes up. I'm going to keep track and see what time it is and uh, track the satellite accordingly. All right, so the satellite's starting to come over the horizon. At this point, it's as far as this distance away, so it's going to be the hardest to transmit, especially from these handheld radios. So the first thing that you want to do once it starts coming around with an omnidirectional antenna, I, what I like to do is a circular motion until I start hearing a bird. And you should uh, be looking for a quieting of the signal or the, uh, the static or an actual person's voice. So I'm just going to twirl my, saddle, uh, my uh, antenna around like this and it kind of helps me find the polarization. I said this is pretty far away at this point so I'm not sure if I'll be able to hear much. So you heard that deafening, that means I'm starting to get a satellite signal. So I'm going to keep it right here, see what I can hear. I think somebody's just got a weak signal and they're trying to transmit. There we go. The satellite's pretty far away still at this point, so it's kind of hard to hear. You can come a little closer if you want. I can kind of hear somebody, but I can't make out their call sign, so I'm not going to reply just yet. So I'm still searching for that polarization until I can hear somebody pretty clear.
somebody's holding the satellite. QSL, this is Kilo November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo. So the satellite's passing on. I'm going to go ahead and uh, tune up the uh, Doppler shift, see if I can hear anything else. Alright, so the satellite's passed, um, we heard some stuff in there in the middle, but there was some interference going on. Uh, normally in between each of those transmissions there's a lot of static, but there was a lot of quiet in there. Uh, you can hear this weird buzzing sound, and it sounded like, I think somebody else actually verified this, that somebody was keying up the mic and they had it held down, and um, it could have been a natural interference, uh, but typically what you would hear in between transmissions is static. So that satellite uh, that passed wasn't as good, but you can kind of get the idea of how this kind of works and uh, the different motions and things like that. 